Welcome adventurous souls to Wild Mythology, the channel where we unravel the mysteries of myth, folklore, and legends. I welcome you with open arms and a warm serving of bread and salt to ensure your safety on this epic adventure. Join me on this journey of discovery where we'll uncover the gods and goddesses of war from mythology, including fierce warriors like Ares, Tyr, and many more. But wait, before we kick off this exhilarating adventure, let's first congratulate our lucky winner from the last giveaway. A big round of applause for Wolf, who just won the entire collection of Percy Jackson books. Now, are you ready to immerse yourself in the fantastical world of ancient mythologies? Are you ready to face off against the mighty gods and goddesses of war? Then grab your swords, shields, and helmets, because we're about to embark on a journey that will test our bravery and courage. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the heart of the action. Ares. Ares, the god of war in Greek mythology, was one of the most fascinating and complex figures of the pantheon. Known for his love of violence and chaos, he was often portrayed as a fierce and bloodthirsty warrior, relishing in the destruction of war. Ares was the son of Zeus and Hera, and had some pretty impressive full-blood siblings, including the god of the forge, Hephaestus, the minor goddess of war, Enyo, the goddess of youth, Hebe, and the goddess of childbirth, Alethea. In Roman mythology, Ares was known as Mars, and was just as important and feared as his Greek counterpart. While Ares had many lovers and many children, his most famous lover was the goddess of love, Aphrodite, who was married to Ares' brother, Hephaestus. Together, Aphrodite and Ares had several children, including Eros, the god of love, who was also known as Cupid, Phobos and Deimos, the gods of fear and terror, and Tyros, the god of returned love, and their only daughter, Harmonia, the goddess of harmony. But as with most things in Greek mythology, there were consequences to their union. Helios, the titan of the sun, once caught Ares and Aphrodite sneaking away together, and so he told Hephaestus. Seeking revenge against his wife and brother, Hephaestus created an unbreakable golden chain net that caught Ares and Aphrodite in the act. The other gods and goddesses of Olympus were invited to witness the humiliation, where they mocked the love goddess and war god without mercy. Ares was also known for fathering children with other women, his children including Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons, the Ismenian dragon who played an important role in the myth of Cadmus, and Diomedes, the owner of the carnivorous horses that Heracles needed to capture for his eighth labor. While his domain was feared and respected, Ares, however, was not always highly regarded in the myths. These myths included the invasion of the giants Otis and Ephialtes, where Ares was captured by them and imprisoned inside a jar for a whole year. Another was during the Trojan War. Ares fought for the Trojans, but was defeated by his half-sister Athena and forced to flee. And yet another was after Heracles killed one of his half-blood children. Ares was so enraged that he attacked Heracles, but was injured and forced to flee. Other notable myths including Ares included the time he sent a boar to kill Adonis out of jealousy over Aphrodite's feelings for the mortal. He turned Cadmus into a serpent for killing his son, the Ismenian dragon, and he also recaptured Sisyphus when the crafty mortal chained death itself. Though complex, Ares represented both the positive and negative qualities of war, including valor, glory, progress, brutality, bloodshed, and destruction. But despite his reputation as a fearsome and formidable god of war, Ares was often humiliated and defeated in many myths. Nonetheless, his legacy continued to be celebrated in popular culture to this day. Tyr. In the rich tapestry of Norse mythology, few gods are as revered and feared as Tyr. Known as the god of war, law, and justice, he embodied the values that were so important to the fierce and proud warriors of the Viking Age. Tyr's image was striking, for he was often depicted with only one hand. This was not the result of some tragic accident or injury, but rather a sacrifice he made to bind the monstrous wolf Fenrir. A 
creature destined to bring about the end of the world. Despite this great loss, Tyr remained a steadfast and valiant warrior, revered for his bravery and skill in battle. It was said that before going into battle, warriors would invoke Tyr's name, seeking his protection and guidance on the battlefield. Tyr's parentage is shrouded in mystery and ambiguity, with conflicting accounts given in different sources. Some say he was the son of Odin, king of the Aesir gods, and the giantess Grid, while others claim his father was the giant Himir. In mythology, Tyr's most important role was in the binding of Fenrir. When the gods realized that Fenrir was destined to bring about the end of the world, they tried to bind him with chains of all kinds, but the wolf proved too powerful for them. In the end, the gods had to resort to asking the dwarves to create a magical chain called Gleipnir. The dwarves created Gleipnir made from the most unlikely of materials, including the sound of a cat's footsteps, the beard of a woman, the roots of a mountain, the sinews of a bear, the breath of a fish, and the spittle of a bird. Fenrir, seeing that the gods wanted to chain him again, gave the gods a condition. Fenrir refused to be bound by Gleipnir unless one of the gods put their hand in his mouth as a sign of good faith. Knowing full well what was about to happen, Tyr stepped forward and offered his right hand. As expected, Fenrir was unable to break free and in his rage he bit off Tyr's hand in a final act of defiance. And so, from that day forward, Tyr was known as the One-Handed God, a symbol of selfishness and bravery in the face of danger. Even during the final battle of Ragnarok, where it was prophesied that he would die fighting the Dog of Hell, Garm, Tyr remained steadfast and resolute, a true warrior to the end. The Morrigan or the Morrigan get ready to step into the world of Irish mythology, where battles are fought and destinies are foretold by the dark figure known as the Morrigan. This powerful entity was known as the Phantom Queen or Great Queen, and she was associated with war, death, sovereignty, and fate. Whether predicting victory, doom, or death, the Morrigan always played a pivotal role in the outcome of battles. She would even sometimes incite warriors to battle and help bring about victory over their enemies. In some myths, the Morrigan was depicted as a goddess of the Tua de Danon, while in others she was a supernatural being or a trio of individual goddesses who shared her name. She was also the wife of the Dagda, an important and powerful god in Irish mythology. Unfortunately, their relationship wasn't always on the best of terms. Her appearance was striking with piercing eyes and dark hair, and she often donned a hooded cloak or a battle dress. Sometimes a crow or raven accompanied her, adding to her mystique. Not only was the Morrigan associated with war and battle, but she was also a protector of the land and its people. In fact, some believe that she represented the land's manifestation of sovereignty and fertility. However, she was also linked to death, and the afterlife, and her predictions of impending doom were not to be taken lightly. In fact, her ability to foretell death made her associated with the Banshees, female spirits who were said to wail as a warning of impending death. In mythology, the Morrigan played a key role in many tales, including the Tynebow and the first battle of Moy Turid. In the Tynebow, for example, she appeared to the hero Cucullin and foretold his impending death. Later, as he fought in battles, he died with the Morrigan on his shoulder in the form of a raven. In the first battle of Moy Turid, she used her magical powers to help the Tua de Danon defeat their enemies, the monstrous Formorians. The Morrigan's nature and role remain open to debate, but one thing is clear, she was a force to be reckoned with. Some view her as a symbol of female power and agency, while others see her as a more ambiguous figure, capable of both good and evil. Regardless of one's opinions, the Morrigan's myth reminds us of the dangers of war and violence and power of destiny. Ku, Step into the vibrant world of Hawaiian mythology and discover the powerful deity Ku. 
who was one of the four major gods in the pantheon, alongside Cain, the god of procreation in the sky, Lono, the god of peace, agriculture, and rainfall, and Kanaloa, the god of the sea. Ku was known for his many facets, although his primary role was as the god of war. But that's not all. He was also associated with agriculture, politics, and fishing, as well as rising since he was married to Hina, the goddess of the moon. His versatility made him a revered deity, and his high status in the pantheon was maintained due to the frequent wars between tribes and island groups. Sometimes known as Akua, Ku's reputation was so great that he was often invoked before battles to ensure victory by warriors and chiefs alike. Ku was even held in high esteem by King Kamehameha I, who unified the Hawaiian archipelago under one ruler and established the Hawaiian kingdom. The king erected monuments in Ku's image, including three giant wooden monuments that accompanied him into battle. As a war god, Ku was one of the only deities in the Hawaiian pantheon for whom people were used for ritual sacrifice. But he wasn't just invoked in battle. Spiritual rituals involving his many names connected him to sorcery, male fertility, fishing, and the wilds such as the forests and the mountains. Ku was also associated with various animals and plants including the hawk, shark, chicken, breadfruit, coconut tree trunk, and noni fruit. Today, Ku's legacy lives on in the traditions and beliefs of the Hawaiian people. He remains an important figure in Hawaiian mythology and culture, a testament to his enduring power and influence. Athena Athena, the fierce goddess of wisdom, strategy, and warfare, was one of the twelve Olympians in Greek mythology. Unlike her savage half-brother Ares, Athena was a master of strategic warfare, and she was also known for guiding heroes like Perseus, Jason, and Heracles to victory in their quests. In Roman mythology, she was known as the powerful goddess Minerva. Athena was the daughter of Zeus and his first wife Metis, the titaness of wisdom. A prophecy had once foretold that Metis would give birth to a daughter, and then a son who would be more powerful than his father. This posed a problem as Metis was already pregnant with Zeus's daughter. Bearing this prophecy and the chance that his future son would strike him down, Zeus tricked Metis into taking the form of a fly and swallowed her whole. Over time though, Zeus would get headaches which would cause the god unbearable pain. It finally became so bad that Zeus had his son Hephaestus take an axe and cut open his head. Surprisingly, Athena appeared from the cut, wielding a spear in full battle armor. After Hephaestus helped his father and witnessed Athena's birth, he fell madly in love with her. But Athena had declared herself a virgin goddess and refused his advances. Undeterred, Hephaestus attempted to capture her, but Athena fought him off. During their struggle, some of Hephaestus' semen fell on her thigh, and Athena, in disgust, wiped it away with a piece of cloth and threw it off Mount Olympus. From that cloth, the baby Erythonius was born, and Athena soon adopted him, eventually helping him to become king of Athens in the future. Speaking of Athens, Athena became the city's patron in a famous myth. After the creation of the city, both Poseidon and Athena wanted to become the city's patron. So the people of the city tasked the deities with presenting the city a gift. Poseidon gave them a spring of water, but it was salty and useless. Meanwhile, Athena offered them an olive tree, which provided food, oil, and wood for the people. Seeing more use in Athena's gift, the people of Athens chose the olive tree and named the city after her. Angered by the people's choice, Poseidon would someday get his revenge. After the incident with Hephaestus, Zeus sent Athena to live with the sea god Triton. There, Athena met Triton's daughter, Pallas, who became her close friend and companion. Together, the two trained in war strategy and combat. However, one day, tragedy struck, when during a friendly spar, Zeus intervenes using his shield Aegis to stun and frighten Pallas, leaving her vulnerable to Athena's spear. Devastated over her friend's death, Athena made the Palladium, a statue in Pallas' likeness. Athena would then cover the back of the statue with a 
piece of her own sacred cloak. The statue would later become a beacon of sanctuary for women in Troy. Athena was also involved in many other myths and legends. She helped in the creation of Pandora and gave the first woman the gift of creativity and curiosity. Athena played a crucial role in the war with the Gigantes, burying one giant under a mountain and using the skin of another to make her famous cloak. In another myth, she transformed Arachne into the first spider after the mortal weaver challenged her to a contest. In another, she blinded the seer Tiresias for accidentally coming upon her while she bathed. Athena's influence was felt throughout Greek mythology, but nowhere was it more prominent than in the Trojan War. She supported the Greeks, and without her guidance, the Greeks wouldn't have been able to prevail over Troy. And that's a wrap for today's adventure, fellow myth seekers. We hope you enjoyed diving into the world of the gods and goddesses of war. From the cunning Athena to the brutal Ares, these deities remind us of the complexities of human nature and the power of war in shaping history and mythology. But our journey doesn't end here. Stay tuned for more wild mythology content where we explore the depths of folklore and legend from all around the world. And who knows, maybe our next adventure will lead us to encounter Lou, the Irish god of light. Until next time, stay curious, stay adventurous, and may the gods be ever in your favor.